we discussed uh, everything regarding the band gap reference except the design of alpha 1 and alpha 2 so we designed our ctat we found uh, ctat voltage is decreasing with respect to temperature so the slope of the ctat is negative and we got the value as minus 1.6 millivolt per uh, degree centigrade or per Kelvin and then we designed PTAT for the PTAT uh, the voltage is increasing with respect to temperature and the slope is positive and we got the value as 85 or 87 microvolt per uh, degree centigrade or Kelvin and we want to add them together uh, to form a reference voltage so the characteristic of reference voltage should be a straight line that is it, that is uh, it should be constant with respect to temperature so the slope we want is to be zero slope negative means uh, voltage is decreasing with respect to temperature slope positive means voltage is increasing with respect to temperature and slope zero means voltage is constant with respect to temperature so this is one this is what we want to achieve uh, using the band gap reference circuit so that means if we differentiate our reference voltage with respect to temperature that is do v reference with respect to temperature should be zero so that is showing by this graph slope zero means it is a straight line it is not changing with respect to temperature so this is what we want to achieve in the beginning itself we said uh, we will make v reference equal to alpha 1 p tat plus alpha 2 c tat So in our case, uh, we discussed the PTAT and CTAT separately and we got uh, the, the PTAT voltage, we got voltage across R2, voltage across this resistor R2, we got as PTAT and the expression for that PTAT voltage, uh, we have VR2 equal to R2 by R1 into ln n where n is the number of diodes in parallel in the vt where vt is the thermal voltage so from this expression we already said this is our core p tat vt is the p tat and this part is just a ratio r2 by r1 is a ratio and ln n is also a constant so this part is a constant so we can write it this as alpha 1 into P tat by considering VT as our P tat. So really speaking, VT is the P tat, and R2 by R1 ln n is just a constant. And our C tat uh, was the voltage across the diode. So we already derived that. Now we can write V reference equal to alpha 1 into VT, where VT is the thermal voltage and alpha 1 we said alpha 1 will contain r2 by r1 into ln n this constant plus alpha 2 into c tat is the voltage across the diode that we call it as vd so this expression we call it as a and uh, this expression we call it as b do v reference by do t is equal to 0 uh, if this is the condition for our reference voltage to be independent of temperature that is a constant voltage with respect to temperature so that implies uh, we have to differentiate this term the whole term so alpha 1 into do vt by do t plus alpha 2 into do vd by do t that equal to 0 from this we have to find alpha 1 and alpha 2 that equal to alpha 1 into 
dou Vt by dou T we know it is 85 or 87 microvolt per degree centigrade plus alpha 2 into dou Vd by dou T is minus 1.6 millivolt near to minus 1.6 millivolt uh, per degree centigrade so that equal to 0. From this we can write alpha 1 into 85 microvolt per a minus alpha 2 into 1.6 millivolt equal to 0. So from this itself it is very clear that uh, see uh, this is our graph with respect to temperature and the slope of the zeta is 1.6 millivolt per degree centigrade. So the slope of uh, this is very much high. It is in the range of millivolt. But uh, our PTAT slope is only 85 milli microvolt per degree centigrade. So it will slope is very less, it will look like this. So this was our uh, PTAT and this is our uh, CTAT. So we really want this PTAT and CTAT to get cancer. For that we want to increase the PTAT slope so that they get cancelled each other completely. So here we have we can adjust alpha 1 and alpha 2 to get cancel. So we have two options here. Uh, first of all what we want? We want to uh, decrease the CTAT voltage or we can increase the PTAT voltage. So if you are decreasing the PTAT uh, CTAT voltage it is difficult in the form of circuit because you have a diode voltage there. So if you want to decrease that voltage you have to connect a huge number of diodes in parallel. So it is not a, a practical solution. So what you can easily do, you can keep this voltage as it is and you can adjust your alpha 1. That means you are keeping the CTAT voltage as it is but you are increasing the PTAT to reach that, uh, to completely cancel the CTAT voltage. So that means I am keeping alpha 2 equal to 1 and I am allowing alpha 1 to change. Alpha 1 we are designing. So the voltage across the diode we are keeping as it is and uh, we are adjusting our alpha 1 uh, that is we are adjusting our PTAT by keeping CTAT constant. So in the circuit also in circuit point of view also it is very easy that means we are keeping the diode voltage constant and we are adjusting the PTAT voltage and we have a lot of flexibility in adjusting our PTAT because we have uh, this R1, R2 and the number of diodes in parallel that is N we can vary uh, to uh, increase or decrease the PTAT. So we want to increase the PTAT and keeping the CTAT constant. So I repeat initially our CTAT has a huge slope when compared to our PTAT. Our PTAT slope was very less. That is this slope is 1.6 millivolt per degree centigrade and the PTAT slope is 85 microvolt per degree centigrade. So this is in millivolt range. This is just in microvolt range. So we want to increase this slope. We want to increase the PTAT so that it get cancelled completely with the CTAT. So for that, I am writing alpha 1 into 85 microvolt. Uh, this alpha 2 into 1.6 millivolt we can take to the other side. That should equal to, to, for this expression to be 0, this should equal to alpha 2 into 1.6 millivolt. So we said decreasing alpha 2 we can make alpha 2 a value which is less than 1 to make them equal but instead uh, we are keeping alpha 2 equal to 1 so we can write alpha 1 into 85 microvolt equal to 1.6 millivolt
So essentially what we are doing here is this is the slope of our C tat. This is the slope of our P tat. So we know our C tat slope is high and our P tat slope is low. So we are uh, multiplying our P tat slope with a constant to make it equal to our C tat slope. And we are uh, not disturbing our C tat. So how much you should multiply this slope of P tat to make it equal to C tat? That is, your C tat is here, your P tat is this. You want to multiply this, you want to improve, you have to increase this P tat uh, into a higher value by multiplying it with alpha 1. So the alpha 1 value, you can find alpha 1 equal to 1.6 milli divided by 85 micro. So alpha 1 equal to 1.6 milli divided by 85 or 87 micro. So that is equal to 18.82. Sorry, the value is not 1.882, it is 18.82. So as the summary of the discussion, we found our C tat slope is high and our P tat slope is less. So we uh, decided to multiply our P tat with alpha 1. So, what our aim is to get the V reference, we multiplied alpha 1 with P tat and then we added with C tat uh, to get a constant value. This expression we reached here by examining our curve of uh, the slope of P tat and C tat. So we know our P tat voltage is Vt and our C tat voltage is Vd that is voltage across the diode Vt is the thermal voltage. So we already derived this alpha 1 the value of alpha 1 we derived and uh, the expression for alpha 1 also we derived from A. From the expression A we can write R2 by R1 into ln n into Vt. So this is the our P tat term plus our C tat term is Vd that is voltage across the diode. So this we uh, derived from expression A that is V reference equal to this much. So this term we are considering as alpha 1 and this term is our P tat and this term our C tat. So I repeat our V we didn't modify our C tat, we, we kept our C tat as it is and we increased the P tat slope and value by multiplying with alpha 1. So this is our P tat, Vt is our P tat and the factor R2 by R1 into LNN we can use it as alpha 1. So by adjusting this value, uh, we can cancel the C tat and P tat completely. And by from the slope and the, from the slope of V reference, we differentiated this curve with, with respect to temperature and then we equated to zero and we analyzed the equation and we got the value of alpha 1 to cancel the P tat and C tat. Uh, the value of alpha 1 we got it as 18.82. So we can write V reference equal to 18.82. 18.82 times Vt that is our P tat plus our C tat as it is that is Vd. So to cancel the P tat and C tat we have to multiply the P tat value by this one alpha 1 that is 18.82 plus Vd. So we can substitute the values for Vt that is the thermal voltage and the Vd that is the a typical vo the di voltage across the diode we can find approximately the value of the V reference that is V reference equal to 18.82 into Vt is 26 millivolt is a typical value plus Vd is the voltage across the diode 
it is not a fixed value it depends on temperature but uh, for approximate value we can take as 0 0.7 0 0.7 volt is the voltage across the diode then we can write V reference equal to 18.82 into 26 millivolt plus 0 0.7 that is equal to 1.189 so it is approximately equal to uh, 1.2 volt so this is a standard band gap reference voltage and uh, we got 1.18 because we got we took the voltage across the diode as 0 0.7 if we took it as 0 0.75 or 0 0.73 we will get in here to 1.2 volt so 1.2 is the standard value it is it is not a random value 1.2 uh, it is an extra extrapolated value of the band gap of the silicon so somehow we by the circuit arrangement we reached to this value so this 1.2 value is the uh, standard band gap reference output voltage we got alpha 1 equal to 18.82 it is an approximate value 18.82 and uh, this is our circuit from this circuit we set alpha 1 equal to r2 by r1 into ln n so in this circuit we have to adjust r1 r2 and n to get alpha 2 to get alpha 1 equal to 18.82 so that is equal to R2 by R1 into ln n, where n is the number of diodes in parallel, R2 and R1 are the resistors. So in the circuit how we will de uh, design R1, R2 and n. So R1 generally is used to determine the, to fix the current in the circuit. We already did uh, uh, that uh, when we simulated the PTAR, we already discussed how R1 is uh, used to fix the current and R2 we have freedom we will come back to R2 later and the ln n n is the number of diodes in parallel and we said in CMOS process even if we want to have a diode we will end up with more uh, BJT so n is the number of BJT that we need in parallel so we can have an any value from 2 to any higher value uh, and can have n equal to 2 is a, a possible value and can have 3 or 4 but generally people use uh, n equal to 8 uh, it is not a magic number we are using people are using n is equal to 8 uh, for the matching purpose that means uh, we have uh, one BJT in the first branch in the second branch we have a resistor across this uh, this is R1 across which we got beta in the first stage and then we have a number of uh, BJTs in parallel up to n so for matching between these two BJT people generally use n equal to 8 that means they will put the this BJT I mean labeling it as A in the middle and uh, they will use identical BJTs to cover those so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so there will be matching uh, in between the BJTs so people use A so in the simulation I will use just 2 uh, but in the layout point of view n equal to 88 will be a good value so uh, we can substitute the n equal to 2 or n equal to 8 in this expression so and r1 is already fixed and we can tune r2 uh, we can change r2 into any value uh, so that the beta and theta get cancelled completely let us do one example for the uh, calculation so uh, assume our we need a current 
equal to 5 micro ampere through the uh, band gap reference and we know the current the expression for the current I0 equal to Vt ln n divided by R1 where R1 is the where R1 is this resistor and this is R2 and this is the number of diodes in parallel and uh, let us use n equal to 2 that is two diode, uh, diodes we are connecting in parallel and we said n equal to 8 is a good number when we consider when in layout point of view in match for better matching n is equal to 8 is a good number but just for this example I am using n equal to 2 and uh, Vt is 26 millivolt uh, at absolute temperature so from this I want to find R1 first R1 equal to Vt ln n divided by I0 that's equal to Vt is 26 millivolt into ln of 2 divided by I0 is 5 micro ampere this is what we want so that equal to Twenty six millivolt into ln two divided by five micro at equal to near to three point six kilo ohm. So we already did did this calculation for our p tat and just uh, using the same expression uh, using the same values. And from the calculation we got alpha 1 equal to 18.82 and we know the expression for alpha 1 that is equal to uh, alpha 1 we are multiplying with p tat so alpha expression for alpha 1 is r2 by r1 into ln n so from this expression we have alpha 1 value we know and uh, R1 value also we know, ln n also we know, so n is 2 here. So we can write R2 equal to alpha 1 into R1 divided by ln n. So R2 equal to alpha 1 we already derived the value is 18.82, alpha 1 we derived uh, 18.82 to completely cancel p tat and c tat into r1 we just derived now it is 3.6 kilo divided by ln n ln of 2 so that equal to 18.82 into 3.6 kilo divided by ln of 2 that is equal to 97.74 kilo ohm so uh, we will verify this in our uh, simulation we will we will do the simulation in cadence and verify this number so uh, this is the approximate value when we do the simulation we, we may have to tune the resistance value little bit so that uh, the p tat and c tat cancels completely when we simulate the band gap reference what type of graph we are expecting so we said uh, we will make a c tat and then we will make a p tat and uh, so that when we add them together we will get a reference voltage as a straight line but uh, when we derived the expressions we found that the curve of the c tat is not a linear uh, wave not a linear graph that means this curve c tat that we got is not a, a linear curve that means it is not a, fix, a good straight line and the p tat we got what is uh, it is almost linear but uh, when you make the circuit in reality so there will be little bit non-linearity in that case also 
So, really speaking, uh, the curve what we have is kind of this. I am exaggerating this little bit. So, this will be our seat at. Not this much, but I am sure I am illustrating to uh, get the feel of that. And our beta will be uh, kind of this. So, as a result, instead of getting a straight line with respect to temperature, we will get a curve like this. If we zoom this area, we can see the curve will be like this. With this difference will be few millivolt, not very much. So when we plot them all together, when we plot all of them together, there will not be much difference. We will get a P dot like this, C dot like this and we will get a reference voltage like this. But when we zoom this area, you can see the curve is like this. Uh, because the reason for this curve, uh, we generally call it as bell shaped curve. This is because of the non-linearity of C tat and P tat. So we don't have a pure P tat straight line and pure straight line of C tat and pure straight line of P tat. We don't have them. So we will get a, a small curvature here. So we will we will show this in uh, we can see this in our simulation when we do the simulation in cadence. So by this uh, the discussion of uh, BGR is over. Now we can go to simulator and we can go to cadence and see uh, the tuning and how we were uh, adjusting R1, R2 and uh, N to get completely get cancel the C tat and P tat and to get a reference voltage.